Amen. Again, that's Proverbs 4 and 23. Thank you, Lord, for your word, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for even bringing your word forward, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I just ask that you allow me to decrease as you increase, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Move by your spirit, Lord. And, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, even for giving us this word to encourage us, to strengthen us, and to empower us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Again, that's Proverbs 4 and 23. And it says, above all else, gorge your heart, for out of it are the issues of life. Above all else, gorge your heart, for out of it are the issues of life. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Today, what I want to talk about is seven signs of a spiritually diseased heart. Seven Signs of a Spiritually Diseased Heart. It is very important that we manage, y'all, our spiritual heart and allow ourselves to take on, y'all, the mind of Christ going into 2023. Because the state and the condition of your heart determines the state and the condition of your future. I want to say that again. The state and the condition of your heart will determine the state and the condition of your future. For the Bible says in Galatians 6 and 7, whatsoever man soweth, that he shall reap. And whatever we allow, y'all, to be planted in our heart is what we will give harvest to in our own season. And one of the things that we need to realize and understand is a spiritually diseased heart is an unhealthy heart. And what's in a person, if the heart is not right, it will soon manifest out of us if we're not right. That's why St. Luke 6 and 45 tells us, for out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Y'all, our heart can be spiritually diseased and, and we may not even really realize it or be aware of how serious and dangerous our life may be in and the role that it may lead us to, which is, which is a role to death and destruction. That's why it says in Proverbs 14 and 12, it says, there's a way which seemeth right to a man and, and, and see, you may feel in your heart that what you're doing is right, but the end thereof may be the ways of death. Amen. Because outside of the word of God proclaiming faith outreach, we cannot trust our own heart outside of the word of God. Amen. Without the word of God and the leading and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we cannot trust our own hearts. Because our hearts are wicked and evil outside the will of God, outside the word of God. That's why it says in Jeremiah 17 and 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above all, above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? See, we really don't know our own hearts. We really don't know our own hearts and the things that we might end up doing. Amen. And, and if we're in our spirit, and, and I mean, in our flesh, and, and our spirit isn't right, that's why it's important, y'all, that we manage our heart, that we, we take management of our heart and our mindset, y'all, going into a new year, going into 2023. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's why I said on this year, uh, uh, our church... Uh, uh, slogan is 2023 will be a greater light for me because that greater light y'all is the word of God. This is the mindset that we need to have coming out of Psalms 119, 105, that your, your, your word, it says your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. And, and, and so Galatians 6 and 8 lets us know if, if we sow to our flesh, y'all, then we will reap the corruption of our flesh. Amen. And, and so we, we are asking God 
to, to give us a clean heart. Hallelujah. This, this is what we're asking God in this season, in this new year, to give us a clean heart and to renew the right spirit within us in this new year. Because y'all, truth be told, church folks are the most wickedest, evilest people on the earth. I'm going to tell the truth and shame the devil. Church people are the most evilest people on the earth because you can be spiritually diseased and still be religious. Amen. And, 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 and that, is, that is one of the things that, that Jesus, he, he told the Pharisees, Jesus told the Pharisees, he said, you hypocrite. He said, you, you, he said you, they appear to look beautiful on the outside, but inwardly they're full of dead man bones. This is what Jesus told them. And, and see, we can appear to be very churchy on the outside, outwardly, but we can be spiritually dead inwardly. Amen. And we can also have a, a, a spiritually diseased heart too, y'all. Amen. So, so what does it mean? What does it mean to have a spiritually diseased heart? Mm. What, what does it mean to have a spiritually diseased heart? A spiritual diseased heart, y'all, is a disorder and a dysfunction of our mind and soul that keeps us out of alignment with God. Amen. That, that's why we need a made up mind, y'all, and a fixed heart. Amen. We need a made up mind and a fixed heart. Because if our heart is not right, y'all, then everything else is out of order. If our heart is not right, then everything in our life is out of order. Amen. That's why we got to get our heart right. Amen. We got to get our heart right if we want everything else to line up in order going into 2023. And, and, and so I want to talk about seven signs of a spiritually diseased heart. Amen. Seven signs of a spiritually diseased heart. Number one, a fearful heart. When we are afraid, this shows signs of spiritual heart failure. Amen. Because fear, y'all, it causes us to operate out of anxiety, worry, dread, intimidation, and insecurity. Fear and anxiety, y'all, is a direct sign of spiritual illness. Amen. If, if we go into this new year, y'all, fearing things that we might lose, if we go into this new year uh, feeling uh Fear, uh, having fear of failure, amen, or, or fear, fearing that, that we might fall, these are direct signs of having a fearful heart, amen. Fear and, 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 and anxiety, like I said, is a direct sign of spiritual illnesses, fearing about what might will happen, what might take place. Then this is the time, y'all, for us to be healed. If we're going into a new year with a fearful heart, that's why it talks about in Philippians 4 and 6, Philippians 4 and 6, it tells us, do not be fearful or anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer. So in other words, y'all, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Amen. Amen. Pray about everything. Psalms 112 and 7 tells us that our heart is fixed, y'all, when we trust in the Lord. Amen. Our heart is fixed when we trust in the Lord. Psalms 112 and 7. Number two, a broken heart. A broken heart is a spiritually diseased heart. Number two, when our hearts have been broken, it can cause us to be in a place, watch this, of hurt, pain, sorrow, grief, and a depressed emotional state due to upsetting events in our life, such as relationship breakups, death of a loved one, dramatic unsuccessful outcomes in our life, rejection, amen, and disappointments and heartaches. And if we allow this to come up in our spirit and remain, it can cause us to be in a state of a broken heart. Amen, somebody. So at this time when we're dealing with this, y'all, we got to allow ourselves to heal and we got to allow God to heal us. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
We got to allow ourselves when we have a broken heart, we got to allow ourselves to heal and we got to allow God. Oh, hallelujah. And we got to allow God to heal us. Amen. It says in Psalms 147 and three, he heals the brokenhearted and bind up their wounds. Y'all, God can heal a broken heart. Amen. He can heal a broken heart. Amen. And number three, an angry heart is a spiritually diseased heart. Amen. An angry heart. Y'all, it's okay for us to be angry. It's okay for us to be upset about certain situations that have occurred in our life. Amen. It's okay to get upset and angry about certain situations that may have taken place. But it's not good for us to stay angry or to stay in anger. Amen. All the time. It's not good for us to stay mad and angry all the time. Hallelujah. Mad at ourselves. Mad at the world. Because y'all, anger, it turns into hatred. Amen. Anger turns into hatred. And the Bible tells us to not let the sun go down on our wrath. Amen. Because anger that is still bottled up, y'all, anger that's still bottled up, it leads to resentment, bitterness, and unforgiveness. Amen. And, and, and see, anger only leads, y'all, to conflict, strife, contention, and arguments. Anger in our heart, y'all, can cause us to live a chaotic lifestyle. Because anger that is unchecked, y'all, it leads to drama, confusion, division, and destruction in your life. Hallelujah. Because a house that is divided against itself cannot stand. That's what the Bible says. So, so we, 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 if we want to receive peace, we got to walk in peace. Amen. If we want to have peace, we got to walk in peace. Amen. Because an angered heart, y'all, is a spiritually diseased heart. Amen. Number four, a lustful heart is a spiritually diseased heart. A lustful heart. A heart that has evil desires and sexual thoughts. So many people, y'all, are bound by lust and sexual immorality. They're bound by greed, covetousness, envy, jealousy, and contentment. Never being satisfied with being content with what they have right now. Amen. Wanting and craving for more and more things. Excessive indulgences and self-gratification of the flesh. Fornication, adultery, and, and, and pornography, and very extreme sensuality. Amen. And 2 Corinthians 7 and 1 tells us to purify ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. Amen. And we are to perfect ourselves in holiness in the fear of the Lord. Amen. Number five, a hopeless heart. A hopeless heart is a spiritually diseased heart. A hopeless heart that is hopeless. A heart that is hopeless, y'all, is a heart that's in despair. Amen. When you are in despair, that means you have lost all hope. Amen. When you are in despair, that means you lost all expectations in the things of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And I come here to tell you don't start your new year off in gloom. Amen. Don't start 2023 off in gloom. Don't go into 2023 in misery with, with discouragement. But walk in faith. But go into 2023 in faith and believe in the brighter days are ahead of you. Amen. Walk in hope. Walk in joy. Hallelujah. Father, as you go into this new year, amen, and allow God's word to lead you. Because 2023 is a greater life for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And number six, a hatred heart is a spiritually diseased heart, y'all. A hatred heart. A, a, I'm sorry, a hard heart. Amen. A hard heart is a spiritually diseased heart. Y'all, a hard heart is a stiff, stubborn heart that grows angry, cold, and bitter. A hard heart, y'all, it becomes callous, 
rough and very hard, meaning nothing can penetrate through it to cure it when you have a hard heart. See, see, the word of God can't even get in there to soften your heart because the, the heart is so hardened. People can't even get in to, to even to soften your heart. So, so people can't get in and God can't get in when you have a hard heart, when your heart has become callous. So it says in Matthew 13 and 15, it says, for people's heart become callous. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. So their ears cannot see and their ears cannot hear and their hearts cannot understand. And they cannot turn to God to let him heal them. Because of a hard heart, God cannot heal a person with a hard heart. And, and, and see, a heart, y'all, that is hard as a rock refuses to repent, refuses to apologize, refuses to forgive. Because a hardened heart, y'all, is a heart of rebellion. A person that is defiant and have a resistance against advisory and correction in righteousness. And a rebellious heart, it opposes against spiritual authority and the word of God. And the danger, y'all, of a hardened heart is a person will become far too gone to receive truth. Amen. When your heart is hardened, you become far too gone to receive truth. That means you will not listen, like I said, to people and you will not listen to God. Amen. Because you're far too gone because of a hardened heart. That's the danger of having a hardened heart. And so it says in Acts 28 and 27, it says, For the heart of this people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed. We need y'all to pray. Amen. That, that, that people that have a hardened heart, their ears will be open to hear, and, and their eyes will be open to see. Amen. Hallelujah. Because we're living in the last days. Thank you, Jesus. And number seven, a numb heart. A numb heart is a spiritually diseased heart, y'all. Because a numb heart, y'all, is a heart that has been desensitized by the world. Amen. It is a person that has become less sensitive to the things of God and, and, and to the coming of the Lord. When you become less sensitive to the things of God and, and, and less sensitive to the coming of the, the, the Lord, then you became numb. Then, then you have a numb heart because a person that is numb, y'all, can't feel anything. Can't feel anything. They can't feel the word of God. The word of God cannot move them. Praise and worship cannot move them. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. They can't even be moved by the presence of God because of a numb heart. Amen. And, and, and so they cannot uh, move or feel the presence of God no more. And, and, and they're no longer on fire. Hallelujah. Anymore. And, and, and you don't feel, watch this, you, a numb heart don't feel for others and cannot feel uh, for the things of God. And so therefore, there is no consideration of others. Because you have a numb heart. And, and if you don't have any uh, consideration or compassion for others, even souls that are dying out here daily in the world, and, and, and even having sensitivity to know that we need to advance the kingdom of God, it's because we have a numb heart. We no longer feel for the things of God. And, and they become desensitized to all darkness. That's why shooting, killing, mass murdering, stealing, and, and people dying in this world don't even affect them because of a numb heart. Because they are numb by being lukewarm saints and caught up in the cares of life. And we need to ask God, y'all, to cause us to have a tender heart. Thank you, Jesus. So that our minds and our hearts can be sensitive to the things of God. Let us stand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We need to be sensitive in this hour, y'all, to God's word. 
hallelujah, that we will not have a numb heart and that we will receive in this hour what God is saying to us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Even just for your word. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. For hearing your word on today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, Father God for purging us, Lord, for cleansing us, Lord, and for washing our heart, Lord, with your word, Lord, your word cleansing us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the breath of life. We thank you, Lord, for, hey, woo, Jesus, for breathing on us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're desperate for you, Lord, we're desperate, Lord, for you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we know that we cannot make it without you. We cannot live without you. And so, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name that you allow us to continue to go into this new year, Lord, seeking you, Lord. Hallelujah. Give us a clean heart and clean hands, Lord. We thank you for restoration and healing right now. Under the sound of my voice, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, Father God, for allowing us to walk in freedom, allowing us to walk in love, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for keeping us, Lord. Thank you for healing us, Lord. Thank you for delivering us, Lord. And we call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus.